Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm Grace Holland. This weekend, services will continue for the Garner family of three killed in a crash on Memorial Day. People who knew Tyler, Susie, and eight-year-old Miles Campbell have held vigils and showed support for their extended family ever since that crash. Meanwhile, the man accused of causing it faces three counts of second-degree murder. WREL's Chelsea Donovan joins us to talk about this case. Chelsea, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Can you describe what we saw during Thursday's funeral service? Yeah, so this was held in Richford County, which is about two and a half hours west of Charlotte. That is where um, Tyler and Susie Campbell went to high school and spent most of their adult life before going to NC State. It was just a small church um, in a town called Ellenboro. Um, really a sad scene as Amazing Grace was played as family and friends filed in. You could see the, the two caskets up front with Miles, the young eight-year-old, kind of sandwiched in between his parents. So really just a, 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 a sad scene, uh, an emotional scene this morning in that church. Yeah, I watched some of that live stream, and, and what stood out to me was the picture of him with the family dog there on his casket. Uh, it just, it oh, just yeah. really pulled at your heart. What were some of the messages that were shared during that funeral that stood out to you? Yeah, so I think the family um, of, of both Tyler and Susie probably had a pretty tough time getting up there, so they relied on the pastor, Mike Connor, to say a few words and heartfelt messages. Susie and Tyler raised Miles with all the odds against them, and they did a wonderful job. Miles grew into a wonderful little boy with a love for all things, wolf packs, and sports. They raised him to love those around him and appreciate what he had. He was so pure and kind, the perfect combination of Susie and Tyler. Miles had Tyler's love for sports and Susie's craziness. Miles loved his mom and dad and would tell them every day. And in conclusion, Tyler, Susie, and Miles were at their core the type of people you would find yourselves looking to for faith and inspiration. You know, we learned that Um, They grew up in that community. They were really a a, a faithful family. Um, Both Tyler and Susie, like I said, went to NC State. They were lovers of running. They were in the running community. Um, They played a lot of video games with their son, Miles, who enjoyed that, as well as Pokemon. And um, really just really uh, huge into the community, the Garner community. A lot of talk about, you know, them just doing everything from Cub Scouts to running to really getting involved in their community, to just see that they were just really loyal friends and family members. They will be missed dearly, but their spirit and legacy will continue to inspire those who were lucky enough to know and love them. The price of being loved is to be missed, and we really, really miss them. So we thank you. Susie, Tyler, and you, Miles, for teaching us to be known and uh, really took the time to embrace themselves in NC State athletics, going to, you know, a lot of the basketball and football games in Raleigh. Right. You know, and it strikes me that service was held on the other side of the state, but here in our area, we've we've seen a lot of tributes to this family. Can you talk about what we've seen um, in support of this family ever since last week's crash? Yeah, there have just been countless um vigils and services from the running community in Garner to Cub Scouts in the community. Just a lot of different uh, things to honor these folks. Just reeling and um, sitting with grief that feels um, unfair. Honestly, one of the most loving things that we can do is sitting with the feelings. Because Tyler and Susie and miles are worth every tear. I mean, they just really threw themselves into the community, into their faith here. Susie was just as as sweet as can be, and Tyler was more of the stoic but really consistent father. Miles was just a kid who just, it's it's natural for him to be kind. I know the Cub Scouts um, held a vigil for the family last week in Garner. Um, that's where Miles was a Cub Scout. Basically, he gave the best hugs. It's so sad he's gone now, but I just, I would like to respect his memory. Me and Miles had a lot of fun, and I just really miss him. 
I know the running community is, is pretty large in the triangle and they too um, had their own uh, vigils as well to remember the Campbell family. Right. And, and have you been out to the crash site? Are there, is there anything out there? Yeah. So this crash happened on Memorial day on highway 70 and new ran road. Um, we went out there this morning and there's freshly erected painted white, uh, white crosses there. Uh, with some flowers, just to remember uh, the three of them, uh, just kind of just a somber symbol of, of those three lives that were lost. All right, let's take a quick break right here, and we'll be right back. Chelsea, before the break, you were kind of explaining uh, this memorial that's popped up at the crash site. Um can you tell us more about this crash? How did it happen according to what investigators have found? This crash and crash happened on Highway 70 and New Rand Road on Memorial Day. We know that it happened mid-afternoon. Um, Jordan Porter, he's a 25-year-old man who lives uh, in the Garner community as well. He's got ties to Zebulon where he grew up. We understand from newly released search warrants this week that he was going 82 and a 45 and he blew through a red light. He Mm -hmm. was in a Chevy Trailblazer and that's when he hit and struck uh, the Campbell family's Mazda. Um, Jordan Porter, who's accused of uh, in this fatal crash, um, was was transported to the hospital. He's got some severe injuries. Um, Miles and, um, excuse me, Tyler and Susie um, passed away. And then Miles, the eight-year-old, went to the hospital and was declared brain dead a day later. Um, But what we've learned is prior to that crash, Jordan Porter had actually been at a place called Rainbow Lanes, which is a bowling alley in Clayton. And his wife had told Garner police during the investigation that he had had several beers there and also smoked marijuana that day. Furthermore, um, when Garner police, you know, started their investigation of his vehicle, they noticed there was, you know, an airplane bottle of liquor in there, um, open beer cans and bottles, um, rolling papers and things of that nature. Uh, he was declared impaired at the hospital. Um, and so we just know that all intensive purposes of what authorities are saying that there was, you know, drugs and alcohol that could have been a factor in, in this crash and also found in his vehicle. Right. It really is staggering when you hear how fast uh, investigators say he was going and then all of these different, you know, containers of alcohol that were found in the car. Uh, Where is Jordan Porter now? Well, um, from what we can surmise, we think he's hospitalized because Mm. he had some pretty severe injuries. We know that he had a, a court date this morning that was continued. And he's been, he's not been served with any of his indictments or charges, which would lead us to believe that he's still recovering from his injuries. Of course, we can't say that as a matter of fact, um, but that was, that would be a, a conclusion that we would come to given the fact that he was transported, uh, in, 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 in a traumatic fashion, right. um, with injuries that happened that day. Have we been able to talk at all to either his family members or his lawyer about these charges and these different allegations? Yes, I spoke to his attorney on Wednesday, um, Carl Knudsen, and um, we spoke after uh, Porter was indicted uh, on three counts of second-degree murder. After this crash happened, he was originally just charged with drunk driving. But the grand jury found earlier this week that there was enough evidence and probable cause that he uh, could face three second-degree murder charges. He also has a laundry list of other charges, including felony death by motor vehicle, um, driving while impaired, and uh, traffic citations. But his um, attorney stands pretty firm that based on the information that his attorney has, that he has less than half the legal limit of alcohol in his system. Now, of course, Mm. that would have to be proven in court. but his attorney kind of stated yesterday, you know, this is a tragedy all around, not only for the, the Campbell family, but for, for Jordan, you know. And he was pretty emphatic in stating that, you know, his heart went out to this family, but he didn't feel that sending Jordan uh, to prison for the rest of his life would change any of that. Um, and so, you know, this all remains to be seen as to what evidence would be presented in a court of law that it will come much later down the road. 
Right. And is it unusual to see murder charges like this in a traffic crash? I'd say yes. Um, Mm. You know, most often not, you see misdemeanor death by motor vehicle or death by vehicle. He's got those charges lodged against him now. You know, it makes me think back to the incident at the Raleigh Christmas Parade where you had you know, a young man charged with misdemeanor death by motor vehicle for hitting and killing Haley Brooks in the Raleigh Christmas parade. Right. Um, misdemeanor charge. So I think the district attorney has enough evidence or she wouldn't bring these charges to the table to know that there was a high level of impairment by Porter um, for her to lodge these charges. So it's unusual, but not out of the norm as to what is in the confines of the law. And what do we expect that the next steps will be in this investigation? Right. So we obviously are waiting for him to appear in court whenever that is. You know, this is an investigation that is super early on um, in its infancy. Um, You know, the judge has preset bond for uh, Jordan Porter at $3 million. He's not been booked in in jail. That's very early on in the process. Um, I know that Garner police are still heavily investigating um, you know, the cars, they've, there's, there's a lot of legwork to be done to sift through all the evidence, and of course, as this kind of works its way through the court system. All right. Well, thank you so much, Chelsea. And I just want to remind our listeners that Summit Church in Garner is holding a memorial service for the Campbell family. That will be at their building on Vandora Springs Road Saturday at 3 p.m. for anyone that wants to attend. Thank you for listening to the WREL Daily Download. Another great way to get WREL news is the Morning Briefing newsletter. It's a daily email that's waiting in your inbox every morning with local news, events, and headlines to get you ready for the day. Sign up at WREL.com newsletter.